So today we're going to talk about auxiliary solar panels. Leaving this place, the sun's about to break. Y'all riding shotgun. I'm just going to drive, drive, drive. Um, about a year ago, I took the uh, flexible panels off of the roof of the RV because Winnebago said that uh, having the flat panels on the roof might ruin the roof so they recommended everybody take them off so I pulled them off and I tested them and they still worked very well so um, I decided to carry them around as uh, uh, portable solar panels um, but up until now I didn't have a, a good way of mounting them when I was using them. So today we're going to show how we're using these Renology uh, stands. Um, I use them on the ground and I use a 25 foot cable to connect the two solar panels into the original ZAMP uh, solar charge controller. I recently upgraded the uh, solar charge controller to uh, a Victron MPPT solar charge controller but I retained the old ZAMP PWM solar charge controller and I'm going to mount it in a cabinet outside here and when I need to set up the panels I'll be able to run the cord into that, that cabinet and uh, connect it to the ZAMP. So this is the circuit that I'm going to use for my auxiliary solar panels. I've got two 100 watt solar panels, the flexible solar panels that are going to come into my ZAMP ZS 30 amp solar charge controller and then connection to the battery I'm going to go through a switch that will uh, allow me to turn the power off from the battery when I'm not using the panels so I can just throw the switch off that'll disconnect the power to the ZAMP and it won't be using whatever little power it would use if it was just sitting there and we weren't using these panels. So I'm putting that on the negative side of the battery power. The positive side will go from directly from the ZAMP into a 350 amp fuse along with the wire that comes from my uh, my inverter charger and then from there it connects to the battery as, as normal. Uh, the negative wire from the switch goes over to my negative bus bar where all my other components negative wires come into so that I only have one negative wire that goes from the bus bar to my uh, Victron uh, battery monitor and then from there it goes on to the battery. The ZAMP charge controller was originally mounted in a cabinet so its wiring is done from the back so I need to create a box to mount in our outside storage cabinet so that the ZAMP can be mounted to it. So I'm going to take some measurements. In my case they are uh, it's four inches high by five inches long. So I designed this little box. I used a, a short one by two board that's three quarter inches thick to create my box. I notched out uh, in the bottom so that so that I could pass the wires through. I have limited tools with me, um, but I do have a combination square and a, a Japanese style saw that I can use to cut this wood. So this is what the finished box looks like. Uh, I painted it black just so that it would blend in with the cabinet itself. Um, and I used a couple of angle brackets on the inside of the box to, to use for mounting on the back of the cabinet. These are the Renogy 28 inch adjustable solar panel mount brackets. These mounts were designed to be mounted directly to the RV roof using rigid solar panels. I will be using them on the ground and with flexible solar panels, so I need to add some braces to make them more stable. 
I used three quarter inch aluminum angle iron that is one eighth of an inch thick. I used two of these, one at the top and one at the bottom. With these in place and the panels attached, they stand on their own. Assembly is fairly easy and straightforward. I just decide what angle I want them to be set at and count the number of holes for each of the brackets so that all at the same angle. These mounting brackets come with the knobs and the wing nuts and everything is very sturdy and well built and designed. And for around $30 on Amazon with free shipping, I think they're quite the bargain. Uh, the knobs and hardware and aluminum angle iron uh, would cost a lot more than that if I were to build it myself. To determine the length of the braces, I first measured the long side of the uh, solar panels from, from the center of one grommet to the center of the, the other grommet. And in my case, that came up to 44 inches. I then measured the center of the hole on the, uh, the mount to see how far, uh, far away from the wall of the mount uh, the, the center of that hole was. And in my case, that was 30, uh, 3 eighths of an inch. So 3 eighths of an inch times two, one for each side, comes to three quarters of an inch. So I add that to the length of the brace, and in my case that came up to 44 and 3 eighths inches. So that's where I'm going to cut these uh, angle irons at. I then mark where the holes are going to be for the, the thumb screws. I used a quarter inch drill bit, simply drilled a hole and augured it out a little bit so that it was a little bit larger than the, uh, make it easier to insert the thumb screws. Now it's time to install the charge controller. I marked a place for a hole that the battery cables would pass through. I used a one inch hole saw and cut the hole. I cleaned up the shavings and painted the raw metal to slow down any rust development. I then installed a one inch rubber grommet to protect the wires from chafing on the, on the metal wall. Next up, mount the box. I used self-tapping screws to attach the box to the back wall. I set it high up on the wall so that it was still visible, but not in the way of anything I store in that compartment. I'm going to run just a short piece of negative wire from the negative post on the charge controller to the input to the switch. And then I'll run another negative wire from this switch to the the negative terminal bus bar that I have next to the battery and then I'll just run a positive wire from the positive post on the uh, charge controller directly to the uh, fuse in the battery compartment. I'm using six gauge welding wire. I'm going to be using a six gauge lug that's uh, 3 8 inch and that will fit on my switch connection and then for the charge controller posts, I'll be using these 5 16 inch lugs and I'll be using heat shrink to cover the ends. This short piece of negative wire is going to be used to connect the controller to one side of the switch. 
I'll then connect the longer negative wire from, this, from the other post on the switch to the negative bus bar in the battery compartment. This hydraulic crimper uh, makes it easy to crimp these heavy lugs on this wire. I then heated up the heat shrink to make a nice clean connection. I then added the lugs to the positive wire that will run directly from the charge controller to the 350 amp fuse in the battery compartment. Now it's time to attach all the wires to the controller. First attach the short negative wire to the back of the controller and then feed the positive cable to the back of the controller and attach both with the provided screws. Then I put the controller in place and attached it to the box. Flexibility is why I chose uh, the six gauge welding wire instead of regular battery wire. This makes it much easier to work with. I then attach the longer length of the negative wire to the other post on the switch and tighten both nuts. Then I secure the switch to the wall using self-tapping screws. I tidied things up a bit by securing the cables to the wall using these zip tie wall anchors. I passed both wires through the wall where the grommet was installed and placed the wires inside half inch split wire loom. The red positive wire is attached to the 350 amp fuse and the black negative wire is attached to my negative bus bar. Setting the whole panel up is not that hard. Uh, it is a little bit wonky uh, to get started because uh, fiddling with the thumb screws is, is a little tedious, but um, I'm looking for a way to speed that whole process up. I'm not sure how to do that yet, um, but if anybody's got any ideas, please let me know. Um, but I find it easier to uh, put the braces in place and then come back and put the panels on one screw at a time and uh, tighten them up and they're very stable once they're all set up. Again, if anybody's got any ideas on how I can simplify this whole process, let me know. 
I'm looking for some sort of a pin mechanism, I guess, that would, you know, just all I'd have to do is just pop it into each hole right through the panel. I don't know what the solution is going to be. I know that this part of the setup is tedious, so there's, there's got to be a better way of doing it. I bought these little water bags that uh, we use for weights to hold down the uh, the solar panel frame. It uh, nice and lightweight when it's empty, but then you just add water and it it, uh, it holds the uh, the frame down to the ground. So if it's breezy like it is today, uh, my panels won't go flying across the yard. So that's what uh, that was my solution for for holding them down to the ground, anyways. Joiner so joins two panels into one line, and then that goes to the other end of the 25 foot cord, comes through this access port in my outside cabinet. So I just pass it up through here, and I can close this door, keep any critters out. And then Plug it into the charge controller. And then I can turn the switch to on. And now we're charging. We're making we're making power for the batteries. And right now we're getting 2.7 amps from those two 100 watt solar panels. I'm getting 2.6 amps. So that is my auxiliary solar panels. We have been boondocking for the last two weeks here in central Florida. And aside from having to move them two or three times a day to keep them pointing at the sun, I think they performed well. If you have any questions about the mounts or how I installed the system, please leave a comment below. If you have any ideas about how to make setting up the mounts easier, please also leave a comment below. Until next time, safe travels. I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up.